What's good, CK crew? It's your boy CK 2K. Which 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 <laughs> words? It's fine. All right, guys. It's been it's been real. See you guys in the next video. It's your boy CK. What's going on, y'all? As always, thank you guys so much for all you guys' support. Today, as you guys saw in the community tab, I initially wanted to do a Q&A. That video is recorded and it's edited, um, but I'm gonna move that for Thursday's video, and I wanna do this video first because I've already pushed this, um, th this today's topic a little bit too long, so I wanna get this out while it's in my brain, so while it's something I wanna talk about. Today's video is an old-fashioned Knicks commentary, and I don't know how long it's gonna be. I don't care how long it's gonna be. It's something I really wanted to address and what really pushed me over was uh, today or yesterday, Monday, uh, David Fisdale was on the jump. He won two yeah. titles as an assistant coach yeah. of the Miami Heat. He is currently the head coach of the New York Knicks. Our friend David Fisdale, thank you so much for stopping uh, by. I'm so thrilled to see you. Again, we've talked about this. I'm not sure how many of you guys actually watched the jump. I like the jump. I'm a fan of Rachel Nichols, but then it also comes down to some of the other people that are on there. If it's Rachel Nichols and it's mean and it's T-Mac, love the show. You bring on anybody else, I have a hard time watching it. But today in particular, our coach, Mr. David Fisdale, was on the show today. And if you guys don't remember, David Fisdale was on the show for a few months last season after he got let go by the um, Memphis Grizzlies. And I enjoyed him on the show to see him back representing us and answering the questions that he answered the way he answered it. It was great. And it really made me think about the interview that he had with Alan Hahn last week that I wanted to talk about, but I never got the chance to talk about. So I'm going to be clumping up my thoughts on everything David Fisdale has said um, from that interview with Alan Hahn to the one um, on the jump. And for those who have not seen it, as always, I'm gonna drop those links in the description so you guys can go and watch the videos that I'm talking about and referencing in today's video. Basically, Rachel and the crew were just, you know, asking the basic questions as as you would the new head coach of the New York Knicks. You're gonna ask them those kind of questions like, how is it being the Knicks coach? And stuff like that, you know, normal questions. And he answered it the way that you would expect. I love his answer because he's been consistent with that since he got the job. And it's basically... Yeah, it was everything I thought it would be. Um, our fans were fantastic. Um, I don't know if I could have got through the year if they weren't. Uh, <laughs> so, like, I feel like he's fine with personalities and he's fine with good teams. I mean, we have remember he brought the Grizzlies to the playoffs in his first coaching year, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I, I love what he's going to, what he brings. But anyways, I'm, I've gone, I, I love Coach Fizzle. If you can't tell, I'm, I'm a fan of Coach Fizzle and I'm glad that he's our coach. But they were grilling him on, you know, the questions of, you know, how was it and stuff like that. And I love his response as far as, you know, um, coming in and doing what they expected. You know, they were losing games, but the youth had the youth was growing and as well as we got ourselves in the right spot for a draft pick and for free agency. Because it's tough, you know, you're hardwired to win, but we got great kids. They came to work every day. Uh, they battled and they got a lot better. And it's uh, just according to plan, just how we wanted to wanted it to go. And then I love how they try to be slick and try to get him to talk about how he's going to approach free agency this offseason. And Fizz, I love Fizz. He stayed strong with it. You're going to pitch me. Why I should be part of the New York Knicks organization? I'm not giving all of my pictures. Oh, <laughs> this is like, you know, hey, hey, he's you don't a understand. TV pro now. No, but, you, but that was basically that whole thing, because basically a lot of stuff that he talked about in that interview, he he already talked about in the previous interview with Alan Hahn, but in more depth, and that's why I want to talk about that interview a little bit more. With Alan Hahn, he broke down um, everything that he loved about the rookies that he had coached over the season, the youth, um, you know, the players' perspective and the per, uh, perception, excuse me, of the New York Knicks organization, whether they were in the organization or from the outside perspective. And those are the kind of things that were really interesting to hear. And I want to break that down for anybody who has not seen it and just, you know, give my mental thoughts on it. Now, throughout the season, I have said, you know, that we knew that this year was going to be a year of development. You know, we're going to be building our, our youth and turning them into to, to players, you know, whether they become stars right away or whatever they turn into. And, you know, everyone was very, very pleased and surprised by what they saw to Mitchell Robinson. And what I loved about what Fizdale had said about him is he was talking about how he has that factor to not only be a defensive leader, but he has the potential to be a leader in the locker room. And that is something that, you know, I honestly did not expect from him. At the beginning of the season, I told you that I'd known enough about uh, Mitch Robinson to the point where I made a Nick story about him because he was somebody that I did know about um, coming into the circuit. Because like I said, he was supposed to be a top uh, draft pick, but luckily for us, um, 
because of everything that he went through and you know not going to school and stuff like that we were able to get him in the second round when he obviously as we have all been seeing he should have been a top 10 draft 100 percent should have been a top 10 draft hell you could even say a top five draft pick i think um bleach report did a redraft and they had him top five which makes sense the kid is phenomenal but i love what he had to say about mitchell robinson as far as his leadership and you know um keeping people accountable on the, not only the defensive end but also on the offensive end talking about he wants people to share the rock and i love that quote that he said we come back to the huddle he was on guys uh if guys didn't run the floor with him he was on them uh if he saw that a guy didn't pass the ball to a teammate he would go bump him and say man share the game then he also had mentioned Alonzo Trier, and a lot of us weren't really uh, sure about Alonzo Trier. I did love the Alonzo Trier pickup because I think Alonzo Trier was a guy that got he had he was handed such a, a raw deal from you know his 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 problems his problems when he was playing in Arizona that to me weren't even a big enough deal for him to not be drafted. He was definitely probably going to be a first rounder too. Um, I I don't think he would have been the lottery pick, but I definitely think he would have been picked um, late teens, maybe early twenties. But he would he would have definitely gotten drafted minus all the off the court things that happened with them. I mean, like I said, the Knicks picked him up that same night the draft happens we sign our guys and then the next day we got the reports that Alonzo Trier was assigned to a two-way deal and I was loving that that was a great pickup for him and Fizzo to me strikes me as a guy that's not one of those guys that's just going to give you the answers you want to hear he gives you the real answers and he gives you the things that you know are, are real as far as from the heat days to where he's are where he is right now so what happened with Memphis like I love that about David Fizzo I'm like, straight shooter he's a straight shooter and that's been one of my favorite things in him so listening to him talk about you know the situations with Trier and the situation with Robinson was dope, was dope. I'm thinking to myself, this kid has obviously got a, a, a misconception, a, a, a real irrational confidence about him. But as soon as we got him and we put him in the gym, right from day one, we were like, this kid's gonna put a lot of pressure on us to make this team. And uh, he did exactly that. And then came probably my favorite part of the whole entire uh, interview was the Kevin Knox portion because it's one thing for fans to talk about Kevin Knox. You know how I've been preaching Kevin Knox. I've been preaching Kevin Knox as a, 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 he's he's going to be a project and he's going to be a patient project, but he's going to be a good um, project nonetheless long term when, you know, everything is um, settled and done. And when him and Alan Hahn talked about Kevin Knox, everything out of Fizdale's mouth was exactly to the T how I feel like we all should be taking Kevin Knox. They were basically talking about, you know, Kevin Knox is a young 19, which he is because he's 19 until August. He's going to go into the next year's training camp at still 19 years old. And he, he, because he just turned 19 when this last season began. Hell, he wasn't even 19 when we went into the uh, summer league. So, you know, he's a young kid that's learning um, the game a different way because he's known to just be a scorer and just a guy that gets you points. But, you know, Fizdale's grooming him to, to be accustomed to playing in the league, to um, being able to play two ways, to do more than just score. And that's something that we did see gradually over time. And then the other thing, too, which wasn't really mentioned in um, in the interview, but it's something off of what Fizdale had said right here about um, guarding guys at his position. Especially, at, that's the... That position in our league, you're talking about the Kawhis, the Kevin Durant, the LeBron James, you know, these guys are, are beasts, physical beasts. And a lot of people were so critical on his defense, and mind you, yes, his defense was one of his biggest weaknesses, but at the same time, we do forget the position that he plays and the people he has to guard, the Giannis's, the Kawhis, the LeBrons, all these guys play his position, so of course, on top of your defense and your, your on-ball defense not being your strongest suit and then playing these guys night in, night out, that's going to hurt your analytics and why you're going to see these these reports talking about he's the worst defender and this and that. And those things are what fans see compared to what you see when you're inside of the organization, inside of a coaching staff. And that's why I like to look at it from that perspective. Yes, I'm a Knicks fan. Yes, I don't work for the coaching staff, so I don't know everything. But I do look at it from that coaching uh, pr perspective, that 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 uh, front office perspective, because that is, to me, the, the, bigger, the bigger picture than it is and from a fan I'm like ah oh, this guy's not giving me this not giving me that i'm not gonna care what he has to say or i don't care what he's doing he's a bust he sucks but long term it's one of those things where it's like no nope, we're molding him into the guy that we know he can be it's a long game be patient with him or don't be patient with them um and that's why i always say you know when he's year three and kevin knox is turning into a guy especially next like a kevin Durant or something like that he's turning into a solid guy 
that you know maybe all star bound who knows when you'll be at that time keep the same energy you kept this this whole rookie season through <laughs> this fast to judge a 19 year old saying that he's a bust and he's not that good you better keep that same energy when he's better you know what i'm saying so um and i love i love what they were talking about you know as far as the growth and as far as sticking to him and you know um helping him uh mature more so than you know figure out the game stuff that he has to be able to mature in the nba game and that's a big deal like those are the kind of tangibles that people don't think about so we get this far to the video and i know i'm just talking about the interview and i'm probably throwing the pieces in of the interview in there but if you're new to the channel and you are a Knicks fan as well i love to talk about the things that really speak to me as far as you know nick's culture and nick's future and stuff like that because i love that aspect i love what this front office brings to us for the nick's organization it's, it's like a it's like a breath of fresh air because in the past it's about like it just always felt like we were in panic mode but this year you know one of my favorite things about what's going on is we're finally building things the right way which leads me to my favorite quote of the entire interview and it's this one right here uh talking about the fact that whether we get a big name or not we're still in a position to be in the right kind of conversations long term whether we get a Kevin Durant whether we get a Kawhi or whether we don't we have a youthful bunch of guys things I say all the time I say these in all these videos but still hearing it again from somebody in the staff is just you know it's almost like more reassuring but here, here's what they had to say about you know where we are if we don't pick up a key free agent the beauty of this is we are doing it exactly how you're supposed to do it you know we got the right people at the top we're building it from the ground up with young talent with high character people players get to hear that and see it presented to them the way that we're going to do it um, I think they're going to see it as an opportunity more than a risk I, I really really if you haven't seen this yet I know I'm giving pieces and showing stuff in here if you haven't seen it yet um, I suggest that you go watch it like I said the links are in the description below of the Alan Hart interview as well as his interview on the jump. Um, Fizdale is somebody I, I, I really love. I'm so glad he's one of our, he's our coach. You know, a, a lot of people are still very skeptical on how they feel about him. But if you watch these interviews, you hear him talk, you hear his perspective, you hear his mindset. It's one of those guys like, yeah, that's the guy I want to be at the helm of my, my team. But again, the comments is always, let me know how you felt about um, not only these interviews I talked about with just uh, David Fizdale, how'd you feel about the, um, the things that you heard from Steve Mills and um, Scott Perry about you know the plans for free agency long term do you guys agree with it do you guys is it more of a what have you done for me lately kind of thing what what do you what's your perspective on that let me know about that in the comments below but it's been your boy CK this has just been a, no, a random ish rant but just my response to so what my coach had to say about my team and stuff like that I love I love these kind of things so you guys know I, I love to talk about these kind of things I love to start this conversation so I want to hear what you guys have to say and you know I'm gonna be in the comments so I'll see you guys there it's been your boy ck i'm gonna catch you guys in the next video for my next fans stay patient ladies and gentlemen things are going to change it feels good it, 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 i just feel very optimistic about this offseason i know it's very similar to past off seasons but this one just feels different whether we do strike out or whether we do get the guys we want something feels good about this one patience everybody you know the deal join the discord follow me on the socials they're right up here you see them everything ck2k much love to all you guys and all the continued support see you guys on thursday i'm out of here let's get it